ජීවිතේ වැඩිපුර ලැබෙන හොඳම දේවල් දෙන්න දැන් SLT Broadband වෙති 75% දක්වා වැඩිපුර ඩේටා සතුට ජනවාරි 15 වෙනිදා සිට ශ්‍රී ලංකා ටෙලිකොම් Good evening tonight taking stock Sri Lankan delegation headed by Foreign Minister Tilak Marapana leaves for Geneva and will brief the UNHRC Council on Wednesday. The politicians of the day. President Maithripala Sirisena criticizes politicians while the Archbishop of Colombo needs them to work together to find a solution to the identity crisis. It is important for us to find a solution towards a unifying country in diversity. thing beyond prime minister rani wickremesinghe says as the country has portrayed a vision towards a middle income nation now we should expand business beyond the island what are the tradable goods that we can increase what are the tradable services not within sri lanka but to go out a tragic tale police rescues a 12 year old girl who was locked in a chicken coop at a residence in heva hatter And in the international headlines, take four. Russian President Vladimir Putin wins fourth term, delighting supporters and dismaying detractors. It's nine o'clock on the dot. From wherever you are in the world, welcome to First at Nine, Sri Lanka's premier English news bulletin on Adha Dirana 24/7. Hello, everyone. I'm Mahesh Joni. Later on in the show, we have a full report of the president's visit to Jaffna today. But first, we want to take you straight to Russia, as the country concluded its presidential election just yesterday. Now, in a widely anticipated victory, Russian President Vladimir Putin was re-elected for a fourth term yesterday, delighting supporters. Dis- main detractors and triggering speculation over what lies in store for the eastern european nation under six more years of the former kgb intelligence officer under russian law the president is ex- elected every six years with a limit of two consecutive terms now during his 18 years leading russia four of them as prime minister putin has entrenched his rule execute plans for expansionism and engendered both friends and foes on the global political stage but like him all or loath him putin has emerged as one of the world's most influential figures now this comes in the backdrop of another leader of another superpower china re-electing its leader this time for a life term with xi jinping being voted president for life and the russian president vladimir putin re-elected in a landslide victory for a fourth term questions will now be raised as to what effects these outcomes would have on the world Vladimir Putin has extended his grip on Russia for another 6 years after an overwhelming victory in yesterday's presidential election a result that was never in doubt with 99.8% of the votes counted Putin won with 76.7% it means Putin will rule until 2024 when he will be 71 and obliged by law to step down western media and West- Vladimir Putin has extended his grip on Russia for another 6 years after an overwhelming victory in yesterday's presidential election a result that was never in doubt with 99.8% of the votes counted Putin won with 76.7% it means Putin will rule until 2024 when he will be 71 and obliged by law to step down western media and western analysts would say that the election has been rigged they have really already started telling that even before the election but i see vladimir putin has won once again he it it's a landslide victory there is a reason for this victory there are many reasons one of the major reason is that as i see after the collapse of the soviet union russia became a wretched country it was vladimir putin who came to power in the year 2000 made russia strong again and powerful again during his tenure presidency russia uh, grew strong economically economically and militarily today russia is almost on par with the united states in terms of military might Sri Lankan parliamentarian Namal Rajapaksha was also chosen to be a member of an international delegation that was to observe yesterday's election. I must say that the polling went on smoothly. 
people came out in numbers towards the evening to vote. We managed to speak to some of the voters while observing the polling stations and everyone was referring to their country. They all mentioned that they have to vote to protect their country from external elements or external powers. There were many reports on uh, international media and certain local media as well about a couple of irregulations regarding to the elections and the polling. But I must say that the, the six polling stations that I visited, none of these irregulations that we found were serious. Meanwhile, in neighboring China, Xi Jinping was elected Chinese president by unanimous vote day before morning at the fifth plenary meeting of the first session of the 13th National People's Congress. 64-year-old Xi was also elected chairman of the Central Military Commission of the People's Republic of China by a unanimous vote. Here, the Congress also approved removing a term limitation, allowing Xi to rule for life should he choose to do so. As usual, Western analysts and media are criticizing this move. They see this as a step towards dictatorship and authoritarian rule as they see during the time of Chairman Mao Zedong. But I think this step may help China to have a strong, consistent leadership. It can go the wrong way as well. At the same time, there is a possibility China will grow stronger and stronger both economically and militarily due as a result of this decision by the Communist Party. But as their respective nations celebrate, we are left to wonder as to what changes these two landmark events would bring about for the rest of the world. For years now, most countries have looked to America when it comes to global politics and global business. However, given US President Donald Trump's volatile dealings of foreign policy, countries around the world have begun to question on many fronts if looking to the US for leadership is really the best option. Russia with President Putin's re-election the recent events in China with the Communist Party Congress and indeed events in other parts of the world too attests to a growing desire for strong leadership as far as the electorates of countries are concerned. There seems to be a rise in a kind of populist authoritarianism because the electorate feels insecure, feels threatened by the consequences of globalization and looks to a leader who is going to enunciate, articulate their interests, defend their interests in a world which they find somewhat hostile. Both President Putin and President Xi carry very overwhelming reputations. They have both been known to make crucial decisions when it comes to their respective countries, which is also the reason why they are both popular choices for their respective people. But whatever may unfold, we all know that these two appointments will change the face of global politics in the coming years. The more liberal strand of political thought and action needs to take account of this and recognize that what we are facing is probably a populist backlash. A populist backlash based on the lack of inclusivity or perceived lack of inclusivity as far as the conventional wisdom of liberalism has been concerned. From Russia, let's take you to Geneva. The 37th regular session of the Human Rights Council just got underway a short while ago in Geneva and the permanent representative of Sri Lanka to UN in Geneva, Ravinath Arya Singha, addressed the session. Here he gave a brief update on the progress made on the adoption of the Universal Periodic Review. The ambassador informed the council that out of the 230 recommendations that Sri Lanka received during the dialogue held last November, Sri Lanka accepted 117 recommendations along with 12 voluntary pleasures. Here is an excerpt from his address to the Council. Sri Lanka is a strong supporter of the UPR process. Its peer review nature allows for open and constructive engagement that encourages countries to address important issues relating to human rights and to learn from each other. We also remain committed to constructive engagement with the UN systems and processes as well as engagement with individual member states in promoting human rights locally and internationally. Sri Lanka participated in the third review in November 2017 in the backdrop of a renewed and transformed local setting following the presidential and parliamentary elections in the year 2015. The renewed focus on strengthening, promoting, protecting and upholding human rights, strengthening democracy, good governance and the rule of law, reconciliation and sustainable peace, equality and dignity for all, 
upholding the pluralistic nature of society and creating inclusive and equitable growth and development in the country. We have requested the Human Rights Commission of Sri Lanka to liaise with the subcommittees to obtain advice and technical expertise required for the effective and efficient operationalization of the national preventive mechanism. The Sri Lankan delegation led by Minister of Foreign Affairs Tilak Marapana left the island to Geneva today to attend the 37th session of the UN Human Rights Council. Minister Marapana will be accompanied by Minister of Special Assignments Dr. Sarath Amadugama, Minister of Local Government and Provincial Council Faisal Mustafa and several others. Meanwhile, the Global Sri Lanka Forum staged a protest in front of the UN headquarters in Geneva yesterday against the conduct of the UNHRC towards Sri Lanka. The 37th session of the Human Rights Council began on 26th of February and will end on the 23rd of this month. United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, Zaid Rad Al Hussein, will present a written update to the Council on the 21st of March on the progress of implementing Resolution 30 upon 1 of 1st of October 2015. He will also inform the Council about the status of reconciliation and human rights related in Sri Lanka. Earlier on the opening session of the Council, he highlighted the absence of a credible domestic solution to the problem of impunity for alleged serious human rights violations. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs stated that the subject minister Tilak Marapana is set to make a statement on the 21st of March following the speech of the High Commissioner for Human Rights. Meanwhile, the Global Sri Lankan Forum engaged in a protest in front of the UN headquarters in Geneva yesterday against conduct of the UNHRC towards Sri Lanka. Global Sri Lankan Forum representatives of many countries including Italy, Britain, Denmark and Germany as well as France joined the protest. UNHRC cannot do anything against a sovereign nation like Sri Lanka. For an example, the UNHRC brings at least five to six proposals against Israel within a year. Israel doesn't care. Minister Mangala Samarwira, co-sponsor in the UNHRC proposal, is a huge betrayal on the nation, as it will destroy the chance for any other country to support Sri Lanka. China and Russia couldn't help us. There is no one to protect us in the Security Council since this began in agreement with Sri Lanka. As Sri Lankans, we do not agree with the Sri Lankan government. President Maitripala Sirisena calls on citizens to identify politicians who do not care for the country or the people. Addressing an event held in Jaffna today, the president also assured that he will not change his principles in spite of the mounting political pressure directed at him. The event to best the technology center of the St. Patrick College in Jaffna with the students was held under the patronage of President Maitri Palasiri Sena today. Archbishop of Colombo, His Eminence Cardinal Malcolm Ranjit graced the event this morning. It is not a time for us to be fighting, to be quarreling, but we must get together. We cannot tolerate racial or religious violence anymore in this country. That chapter should close definitely. But we must work hard because it's not easy to achieve the union that we are aspiring for. We have to make many sacrifices, sacrifices of our own identity sometimes in order to reach out to the other side. It is in that spirit that it is important for us to find a solution towards a unifying country in diversity. And therefore, I make use of this opportunity to call upon all our political and religious leaders to get together and find a solution to Sri Lanka's identity crisis, which has to be overcome. There is a question as to how many politicians are there who actually think about the country. They don't care about issues in the country or maintaining peace. Their agenda focuses only on gaining political power for their personal benefit. There's a dire need for honest politicians to come together. It shouldn't be important for people in the country as to who is going to be the next president or prime minister. People must instead identify the politicians who don't care about the country or its citizens. In 2015, people of this country allowed me to have a resounding victory. I have never broken that trust of the people. I wouldn't change my principles, no matter how much pressure I am under. People must recognize who's doing the right thing. Meanwhile, earlier in the day, when the president was on his way to St. Patrick's College, relatives of the missing persons held a protest on the A9 main route. Protesters demanded for immediate solutions to their issues. 
Later, the Jaffna police officers had assured the protesters that three of them will be able to talk about their issues with the president. Although the police had taken the three protesters to St. Patrick's College, they did not receive the opportunity to meet with the president. This led to a tense situation where protesters blocked the main road seeking the attention of the authorities. However, police officers managed to disperse the crowds after a while. <laughs> Protesters were later seen continuing with their objections in front of the office of parliamentarian Mave S.A. Nadiraja for some time before vacating the area. Former President Mahindra Rajapaksa asserts that the law which should stand equal to everyone is being bent today to fulfill personal agendas. The former president made this comment at a religious function held in Paduka yesterday. Former President Mahindra Rajapaksa presided over a religious ceremony held at Padukka yesterday. Among the dignitaries, the newly appointed Chief Sanganayaka of the Kote Sri Kalyani Samagri Dharma Mahasangha Sabha, Chief Incumbent of the Liyanavala Sri Subhisuddha Rama Temple, Venerable Dadugala Kashyapathera was also present. The law which is equal to everyone is bent to fulfill revengeful agendas. We should be aware of those who do such things and should not allow it to happen again. Our culture is collapsing. We see signs of a culture that is facing destruction due to certain acts that are to be legalized. We see signs of a culture that is facing destruction due to certain acts that are to be legalized. They are attempting to legalize certain things that needs to be done behind closed doors. Two people died today due to two shooting incidents that took place in Orwella and Armour Street. A gunman on a motorcycle opened fire at a couple travelling in a vehicle at Armour Street from which the man succumbed to his injuries upon admission to hospital. The other victim was reported in Orwella was also shot by an unidentified gunman. It is of great significance that such incidents are alarming on the rise as seven such incidents have been reported within the first quarter of 2018. The incident took place around 10.45 at Messenger Street in Armour Street. An unidentified gunman opened fire targeting a couple travelling in a vehicle and fled the scene. The incident was caught by a nearby CCTV camera. The couple was admitted to the Colombo National Hospital, but the man, however, succumbed to his injuries. The deceased has been identified as 42-year-old Inasamuttu Anthony Raj, a resident of Demotagoda. The motive behind the shooting is yet to be unraveled. According to information received, the victim was released two years ago following a 15-year imprisonment for drug trafficking. The body of the victim was taken from the Colombo General Hospital to the Office of the Judicial Medical Officer of Health in Colombo in order to conduct a post-mortem examination. Meanwhile, a person who was travelling in a motorcycle was shot by two people who came in another motorcycle in Galvaru Sava in the area of Oruvala. A 44-year-old man was killed by the shooting which took place at 5pm in the evening. Both the government and opposition parliamentarians expressed their views over the proposed no-confidence motion against Prime Minister Ranu Vikramasinghe. This no-confidence motion will be tabled in Parliament this week. We wish to tell President Matripa Sirisena that his intervention in this matter will be decisive. We believe five MPs from the SLFP and UNP will place their signatures. We hope to hand this over to the Speaker tomorrow. Following the recent election, the SLFP have come to a common stance where it is agreed that the Prime Minister should be removed from his post. This has not changed. If there are ministers planning to sign a no-confidence motion against the government, we wish to tell them to have a backbone to step down instead of waiting in their positions and continue to receive benefits from the government. It was Minister Ranga Bandara who said that he will bring a no-confidence motion against the Prime Minister and will clean this government. 
It was not us who started this, it was them. Just like how the Bangladesh cricket team did a snake dance in the cricket match, they will have to do the same thing here as well. There is nothing else they can do about it. According to the standing order of the parliament, if a no-confidence motion is brought against a minister or prime minister, it should be considered with utmost importance in the agenda and must be done immediately. If the JVP cares for this country, it is their duty to support the no confidence motion personally no one has spoken about the no confidence motion there is a question of confidence in the no confidence motion well, recently we brought you the story of two children from the same family who were suffering from a life-threatening liver failure and many came forward with generous support and donations. Five-year-old Jinuli Pintara and her three-year-old brother Chamika Harshana, who was suffering from a liver failure, lives in Maha Andhrabava, Navagattigama, Anamadu. Although doctors recommended that a liver transplant needs to take place in order for them to survive, their parents did not have the means to do so. As a responsible television network, other Derana revealed their plight to the world on the beginning of this year. Prime Minister Rani Vikramasinghe and some generous people in the country offered donations to the two children after that report. Accordingly, Charmika, who is expecting to undergo the surgery at a hospital in India, was able to do so after receiving the required amount of 10 million rupees through generous donations. Charmika is expected to leave for India on Wednesday morning for his surgery. Now, child abuse has become a daily occurrence and we continue to hear these tragic tales. One such story was reported from Hangurangketa where a 12-year-old child was discovered locked inside an animal cage. According to recent statistics by the NCPA, over 9,000 complaints have been received for 2017. Speaking of the matter, former Human Rights Commissioner Dr. Pratibha Mahanama Heva says that related government agencies need to work together to ensure that child abuse cases are minimized. The child was locked inside a chicken coop at a residence in Rahatungude estate, Heva Vata Hanguran Keta. After receiving a 119 call at 9 this morning, officials from the Children and Women's Unit of the Hanguran Keta Police were dispatched to rescue the little girl. Initial investigations revealed that the mother locked her 12-year-old daughter inside the cage before she went shopping at the village market with her siblings aged 4 and 8. According to the police, one of the children was suffering from a disability. <laughs> <laughs> Measures were taken to admit the 12-year-old child at the Rikiligaskanda Divisional Hospital. Upon the instructions of the director of the hospital, it was later decided to transfer her to the Candy Teaching Hospital to conduct a medical examination. The parents, who were taken into custody by police shortly after the incident, were later released on bail. However, further investigations are being carried out into the incident. This is but one isolated incident. According to the Child Protection Authority, in 2017, out of 9,014 complaints of child abuse, 2,144 incidents were related to child cruelty. A further 390 children were victims of neglect, while 80 complaints were that of domestic violence. Furthermore, according to the country discussion paper of the United Nations Children's Fund in 2017, it highlights the inadequacy of data available on the prevalence, drivers and impacts of different forms of violence against children in Sri Lanka. It further states that administrative data is underutilized, which is a source of information on the performance of the child protection system in preventing and responding to violence against children. This has led to mixed support among stakeholders for addressing the lack of evidence on violence against children in the country. Speaking to Adhidharana, former Human Rights Commissioner Dr. Pratibha Mahanamheva said that although there are laws in place, there is a lag in implementation. Sri Lanka stand, all the laws are there, but implementation part is not there. For example, if a case comes to court, it will take more than six to seven years. So to serve this, 
I mean we need law amendments like 2000 Civil, Civil and Political Rights Act where a child, any, any offence against child you can indict in a high court. So here you have to see very carefully investigation, police must have proper training to take down their statements. This is where three ways we have to do it, laws are there, implementation part as well as the court procedure and the evidence procedures. Sri Lanka day by day abuses against children, rape against children are rising. But the ministry is there, every provincial council you have a ministry, but they are not collaboratively working, harmonization is not there. In the world index we have gone very high. He also noted that any offences committed against a child must be concluded within six months. So you must have special courts like for other purposes judicature bill is coming up. Why can't you put that child abuse also a special high court? This is a good time parliamentarians come forward, expedite all child abuse, child rape cases into the new bill also. Any person even who is not basically connected to these things must give information. Sri Lanka's award-winning news channel, Other Verena 24-7. Welcome back everyone on to Business News. Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe says that Sri Lanka's economy outlook should portray a vision towards a middle income nation as the country has now achieved that feat. Addressing the Sri Lanka Print Awards 2018 held in Colombo yesterday, the Premier also revealed the government's aspirations to make Sri Lanka a print hub in Asia. Good evening and welcome to the Print Excellence Awards 2018 brought to you. Organized by the Sri Lanka Association of Printers, the Sri Lanka Print Awards 2018 crowned the industry's best contributors over the last year. Your FDA with Singapore and many other countries to come will pave the way to assist printers in Sri Lanka. Some of you are already printing for export, but much has to be done in the global arena where we face severe challenge which calls for high quality, productivity and ability to reduce costs by reducing waste. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe focused on aspired changes for the country's economy. So we are in a transition. We were a low-income country long some time back. Our salaries are still pegged at that. But our economy is now one of a middle-income country economy. Our economic activity must catch up. For the future, we have to earn more which means transforming our economy from non-tradable goods and increasing the tradable goods. What are the tradable goods that we can increase? What are the tradable services? Not within Sri Lanka, but to go out. This is why we got the GSP+, Plus. we have the FTA with Singapore, we are looking at deepening our FTA with India, another FTA with China, and hopefully when RCEP is formed, to join the RCEP. That will be the biggest Asian market. Now we've got to create the industries and services where we can compete. Your printing industry must also look for the future. I'd like to tell that I'd like to meet with your association and see how can we help you with trade adjustment, how can we help you with your printing school, as you are in uh, discussions with Finland and others. You are looking at a printing logistic industrial park. You want to make Sri Lanka a print hub in Asia. You are watching. Sri Lanka's premier news channel, other than 24-7. In sports, India won the final of the Nidhas Trophy 2018 in grand style against Bangladesh by four wickets. The match couldn't be more perfect as it saw some intense rivalry, a cracker of a contest and a last ball thriller. Dinesh Karthik was the man that deserved all glory for his unbeaten eight ball 29, which led India to victory. India won the toss and opted to field first in the Nidhas Trophy final against Bangladesh at the R. Premadasa Stadium. Bangladesh kept losing wickets at regular intervals but Sabir Rahman's 50 ball 77 got the Bengali team to a defendable total of 166 for the loss of 8 wickets. With a victory target of 167, India did not have the best of starts as they lost opener Shikhar Dhawan and Suresh Raina. Off the leading edge, Deccan, that's a good catch. Nevertheless, KL Rahul, Manish Pandey and Vijay Shankar added some valuable points to the total. Well, what a start from Dinesh Karthik. 
But that, however, couldn't help reduce the pressure that was piling up on India as well as Bangladesh. Dinesh Karthik was the man India turned to as he did not disappoint as he led India to victory in a thrilling last over. Last ball, five needed. Oh, he's gone for eight. That's going to be a super over. Oh, has it gone all the way? It has! This is unbelievable from Dinesh Karthik. That's a six. One of the flattest six. And he got to feel for Bangladesh. But what has Dinesh Karthik? Indian skipper Rohit Sharma meanwhile thanked the Sri Lankan crowd for their support and hailed Karthik for his match-winning knock. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, brilliant for the crowd uh, who came out in numbers. It was a little different uh, when we play against Sri Lanka. You know, uh, the support that we got uh, here from this crowd was brilliant. On behalf of my teammates, I would like to thank the Sri Lankan crowd for coming and supporting the way they did. You know, they, they enjoy their cricket, which was quite evident and very happy to see that. Very happy to see uh, Dinesh uh, doing what he did. And it was important, you know, he didn't get much of uh, the game time. And the way he came out and, you know, showed uh, that character was very, very crucial for, our, for us as a team. Here's Katharina Chang with the weather. A very good evening and welcome to Forecast First. Now, your temperatures will vary between 19 and 31 degrees Celsius over the course of the day. Now, if you take a look at the map, we can expect a low precipitation zone, particularly in the central and western region of the island and some low pressure zone in the vicinity of Sri Lanka, which means we can expect some favourable or sunny weather conditions in the northern region of the island, particularly in the areas of Jaffna, Trincomalee and Vaunia. Moving downwards, however, some thunder showers can be expected in the cities of Colombo, Gaul, Nigambu and Hambantota regions. That's it from your weather centre tonight. It's now time to take a look at your city by city forecast. And that is a part of your world tonight right here on Other Than 24 7. First at 9, we'll return tomorrow at the same time. Be sure to join us then. Now, before we wrap things up for tonight, we'd like to take you to the Sembuatha Lake, which is a popular destination in Sri Lanka and is also famous among tourists. Thank you very much for joining us. Have a good night. The news and information 24 hours a day. This is Sri Lanka's premier news channel. Other Varana 24 7.